Assalamu alaikum adab and welcome to Diwane Zara Ek Pyali Chai. I'm Zara Hamid and today I'm being joined by Zebunissa Barki from Karachi. She is a journalist with 17 years of experience who is currently working as the deputy editor of the op-ed pages of the English daily The News. She's trained both as a journalist and a lawyer, and she has worked in editorial positions for 17 years. Most of her initial years have been uh, editing a quarterly journal for regional affairs. And Zebunissa also teaches um, Pakistan history, media studies, and current affairs to undergraduate students. In 2009, she co-founded the South Asian Women in Media, Swam and Zebunissa has studied in Lahore and London at Kanet College Lahore and at the London School of Economics. Thank you Zebunissa so much for joining us and for being here today and uh, hello hi Zebunissa can you hear me? Yes I can hear you thank you for having me. So Zeb, Zebunissa we're going to jump right into um, uh, you know, you've been working for so long as a journalist and what are some of like the five, like the top five things or issues that come to your mind when you think about journalism in Pakistan that you feel very strongly about? Um, you know, I think right now for a lot of us, and this is, this is not just Pakistan, this is global. Um, the main challenge that journalism faces and which a lot of us journalists have to think about these days is is the is sort of like the death of journalism and the and and almost um, the rise of a new kind of journalism in a time of fake news pr propaganda sort of camouflaged as journalism i think in pakistan hamare upar bhi wo waqt ek tarike se aa chuka hai um we have seen print and then TV is I mean, you and I are talking on Zoom, which is fabulous. And a lot of people are using that as well. But obviously that has consequences also on journalism, right? Uh, because the space is being taken over. Uh, so how do, you, how do you move forward while remaining, uh, while being a journalist, of course, you know? So that's something I think about a lot uh, these days. Um, Obviously, the second and the most important, uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, is um, freedom of expression, speech, you know, the right to be a journalist, um, which uh, sort of becomes more magnified where we are situated, um, which we all know what, what happens over here, and it has been happening more. And, um, and I think tying in with all of that is the financial, uh, nobody talks about this much, but um, there's no money, <laughs> frankly, in this. And, um, there's no money in journalism. Um, and that's fine because our, at least how many you know, you and I, we, we trained together, right? And so the people who who taught us were old school, proper journalists who sort of taught us that you know this is you don't talk really about all of this and you know journalism is for the truth and all of that and of course it is um but we saw a boom in tv and we saw a lot of um disconnect um and a lot of um tracking. there's a lot of difference between the highest paid person Listen. and somebody even like me, who I'm not, I'm, I'm mid, middle tier, maybe, you know, you could say that. And, um, a and even a, 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 or a reporter or even a sub-editor, who is now a new child. So, yeah. obviously, we all have rents to give and, you know, bills to pay and all of that. So, that is something that is, um, that's very difficult, which is why you will see a lot more YouTube being monetized you know, uh, of course, um, and people moving towards that. But it is, it's a struggle, I think. I mean, for me, these are the main, the, the umbrella issues and unke niche phir obviously, um, all problems are, you know, issues. So, um, you know, 
you've talked about freedom of speech of for journalists and also um, you know the lack of the changing scenario of what journalism is now um, where do you think that journalism will be in the next five years I don't know. I mean, I have. A, I don't want to be too bleak on your lovely show right now. You can. <laughs> so you totally as well. Um, look, mm -hmm. I have a very bleak um, view these days of what is happening, um, which is more political than anything else. Um, but if you're talking about journalism on uh, as a as an industry as a field, you know. Yes. Um, yeah, I think I I I think we will see the end of big name TV anchors, maybe because a lot of it is moving online, and if you see, you just Google, and a lot of big name TV anchors are starting their own YouTube channels as well. Halanki un sabke pas nokia hai apne apne channels mein, right? So you you see a shift because they're obviously seeing a lot more of that. Right, and I think, in many ways, even um, I'm going to digress into something else. Sorry, well, I, I do that sometimes. But um, we lockdown. Me dekha tha na, wo, I was reading somewhere, I've forgotten where, that it was the end of um, celebrity culture, right? Because right. so many of us, you, me, everyone, we 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 all went on Zoom, and there's so many more interesting people out there. And they're not airbrushed or celebrities and unko itne bade bade paise nahi mil rahe kisi channel se to come and say nothing actually. So mm -hmm. these sort of conversations, I mean, this is a different sort of conversation, but but there's been a lot more of journalism, right? Also being done online, right? right. I'm just I'm sort of I have my fingers crossed that. It survives, uh, you know, and that our younger journalists, um, and some of them are super great, um, and some of them have been my students as well. I'm very proud of them, but um, that they don't fall into the abyss of, you know, clicks and baits and all of that stuff, uh, which is great, except, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm a little old school. I want there to be a story, you know, that I'm. I'm reading something and it's it's something else is there, but there's a misleading headline. Yesterday I was reading some, re, it was such a bad headline. And um, mm -hmm. and obviously because it was a bad headline and I was like, oh, what, what? And I clicked it and the story was not And it really irks me as a very old school, stodgy uh, person that this is what it is, but it is what it is. And I suppose we have to also maneuver our way. So you can use that, but use it intelligently. Mm -hmm. yes. Stupid, I, you know, that's I all. think use it positively. I think there's a lot yeah. of, there's a lot of positivity to come out of this because now, like you said, it's not just about a chosen few. Uh, now no. you can have now you can have people much more diversity and inclusion in journalism, and that's I think. And on that, yeah, I'm sorry I'm cutting you, but on that, that is the most. I'm sorry I didn't actually mention that for this, the diversity, the 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 way social media has opened up. You know, um, we have colleagues and 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 activist friends from FATA, right? Um, and I, honestly, I don't think any of us would have even known what they're doing, what they're doing, what politics are, what their journalism are. And sara, it's all of that is happening because we know them via Twitter or, you know, they've sent us something uh, via Twitter mostly or Facebook, right? And mm -hmm. it's great. It's super. That is the, that is the positivity. Um, that's there. There's no denying it. So I'm all for. That's why, with all my reservations on one side, um, I, anytime there's talk of cutting down on or you know sort of like regulating, which is government speak for censorship, social yeah. media, I would be. I'm like out there because, no, that's that's how you basically homogenize things, and we want more diversity and less homogenization, mm -hmm. right? Of uh, homogeneity, I think. Yeah. 
So you have been living for nine years in the in, in Karachi, and Zebunissa right now is in her beautiful flat. As you can see, it's it's beautiful. It, <laughs> yes, it's it's lovely, and uh, so you have been living on your own as a journalist, as a woman living independently. And how has that experience been for you? What have been what has uh, that been like? You know, um, when you and I just had like that quick conversation um, about about something related to this, and I got down to thinking um, that you know I've been thinking for the past eight nine years, and I think now after your conversation, I will um, write. I will wanted to write a piece on looking for an apartment in Karachi when you are alone, a woman, and pretty poor. um uh, with like no financial uh, support um and it would be a, a a probably a fun piece because i swear to god the sort of characters and questions that you can that you are i mean i'm i'm talking about the lighter side of it because now i'm sort of past that and so the nightmare is over but every time i think of looking for a place over here i i, I feel like i will exist a nightmare and it's really it's traumatic um so the whole the actual living space issues are very real and i think a lot of people don't realize that because you know there's a because we're a class based i mean the whole the class based structure um most of the people that i would know maybe you would know uh, mm-hmm. wouldn't have this issue because hamare aage piche support systems hote hain normally you know particularly khawateen ke liye us tarike se if they're going to be following a set path um but if you're not doing that and uh, you choose to be adventurous and you choose to pack up your bags and move to another city without any money and very little salary um you should know that it's not going to be a piece of cake and um honestly that said i think everyone should do that honestly i think um i have grown up so much uh, which you might have noticed as well as, as a friend and uh, um i think the learning the learning curve is so sharp in this one because hum itne complacent ho jate hain apne apne gharon mein except tarike se and um, i moved you know as a lahore person to karachi but obviously you know moving from karachi to lahore would have its own set of um, you know issues, issues. um yeah. and, and challenges and of course um i mean i i was i been i was funny about this but it's not funny in the sense that you know the challenges that you face as a woman who's alone um looking for spaces to live in uh, it's it's it can be very um exhausting and almost you know at some point you like in mujhe kabhi bhi yahan pe kuch nahi milne wala because you know people have issues aap akeli hain aapke saath kyun nahi hai koi i was once offered by a real estate agent that he would find me a husband um a, a fake husband who would go with me <laughs> and pretend just <laughs> and so then i would get, get a place apartment. just so oh i could get God. a place so they actually have them on rent right you can rent a you could rent a husband in pakistan and go and sort of pretend and then and you know the thing is that and it's it's funny but it's also really sad if you think about it, it that you have to jump through so many hoops just to get a place because people are so scared and the whole morality thing comes in comes and in. Then, yeah. of course frankly if you have money then everything is fine then you know your daddy can buy you a house and an apartment and it's all cool but if you don't and you're sort of struggling and you know aapko ek specific budget mein apartment yeah, chahiye yeah. to fir aapko zameen ki baat hai aap wo fancy wali building mein nahi jayenge jahan pe sab chalta hai it's all cool then you have to be in this one particular space where people are like oh my god why is she alone and that alone thing you know really follows you right um a lot over here so yeah it's uh, but i think that everything said and done it's something that i wish more people would do sort of move outside of their comfort zones in pakistan 
and sort of just pack up and move to another city and sort of work and there. And experience that. I, th- I think so. It. I've always admired that quality about Joseph and Asad that, you know, you found a job and like, you know, I mean, I remember that I got job offers in Karachi and I didn't take them up for this very reason that I was scared of living on my own. Uh, and I was scared of the possibility of what that would entail, you know, which is which is what you're talking about, like living on your own, um, uh, public transport, uh, you know, uh, getting by every day to a workplace, um, security issues, uh, all of these things. And yet you've done it, you've done it and you've done it so well for nine years. And um, what advice would you give to young women who, especially young female journalists who are coming into the field? Um, <clears throat> so, well, young women journalists coming into the field, um, I mean, I'll take away the living gala part because not a lot of people do that. It's already tough. Again, the money thing really matters. Zahiri baat hai. Um, even if I'm feeling the crunch right now and I'm more senior than, you know, somebody, a rookie would be. Um, so I get it. They, they need to stay with their parents or wherever they are situated so that rents for are fine. But for, our, for women journalists, generally, I think, you no. Know, the thing is, there's so many challenges. Um, I don't know if you, I think you do, you do know um, that a bunch of us women journalists wrote um, a, a, a joint statement recently where we talked about how uh, this targeted harassment of women journalists, which is more, is which is sort of uh, gendered, it's gendered harassment. And um, so, you know, our, it's not just, um, it used to be that your families are stopping you, which is no longer the case much because media ki jobs have opened up, so it's good that you know young girls are coming in. But the thing is that um, when you're online, that's supposed to be a safe space, right? You and I are talking and there's this comments niche, um, and, and if they're only full of abuse and hate and sexualized abuse, um, that follows you home. It sort of enters into your house, through your computer, through your phone. And they, and you know, with girls, they have families online. I have my, my father's online. And Same, yeah. he's not very happy, you know, if, if something yes. like that. I would be very upset if he saw the kind of abuse that we get uh, every single day because we have different politics or we dare to, to ask questions. Or speak or, up or have an opinion. Right or have an opinion, and I honestly, um, I confess to having to now second guessing myself at this age to be wary of oh, I say, many likha to ye to lagega, aise to hoga. So don't do that to all the young girls, women. Uh, and don't, don't, don't think That's about it. It's, it's unfortunate that you are um, part of an age where this literally seems to be, this is the way things are. So speak up, um, look for mentors within the industry and hopefully there are some and if we're not mentoring you, then we're doing something wrong and you should call us out on it. Um, and um, don't stop your journalism, but be a journalist, of course, you know, try to, to look for the craft of journalism and that's my advice would be to to stick to it continue and it it this will just it sort of goes away after a while and learn to figure it out and if you if we keep speaking up about it people and and shame people who are doing all of that hopefully we'll be able to create an environment that will be safer online for everyone including children there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hate out there um, in the internet web zone, whatever. And um, that, that applies to us as well. And there's no, there's no regulation either. You see, it to self-regulation or regulation in a way, regulation is always taken in a very negative way. A regulation where, which is democratic and people are involved and people's opinions are taken on into account uh, and all the stakeholders are taken into account uh, to sort of create a safe space because now 
this space now, you know, because of after COVID has happened, is a space where our children are also online, we are online, uh, our work is online, our school is online. And so, you know, it's become a space which is being occupied by everyone, you know. I think, um, yeah, as far as regulation goes, um, when we wrote our statement, um, we, we were very careful to tell the government that we do not want your regulation. You know, as in, we don't want state the state to start poking its nose in, in this. Why? Because the state or anyone in power usually comes up with, um, like you said, negative their regulation is negative in the sense that it, it is it consists of a set of negatives, uh, which means stop this, ban that, block this, you know, yes. but like you said, um, self-regulation, honestly speaking, I, I don't understand what sort of people sit on their computer and churn out that stuff. Honestly, I just, I don't get it. What makes you, what gives you so much hate that you are going to talk like that to about someone or to someone you never met, will never meet, don't know from Adam. I don't come on TV. I'm not a famous person, right, at all. Um, so, and so it's not like somebody thinks, ke, oh, I know this person because he's on TV per hai her rose. So I'm um, familiar lag rahi hai, ya koi, Not that that should have any bearing on this, but I don't know. Hmm. But if I can get so much hate for just an opinion that is, you know, there that you don't like this thing you don't like this and the answers come self-regulation but maybe you can have a sociologist or somebody come over someday and have a talk about this it's the, it's the social changes that come from within society you know, who are you talking to um, the fact that women, honest to God, are see, see sometimes I don't think they see us as human. I think they just don't see us as human beings. And so how dare this person, whatever this thing is, have a voice, right? Um, and even men, like our male colleagues, get abused in gender terms related to their women, their women right? Mm. So even their their sort of female relations are brought in. It's not, you know, um, it's just, I think it's a lot of hate and that hate needs to be, to be figured out what's the root of that. That needs to be addressed. And there's a That's lot of that out there uh, globally. It's a pura incel culture. And our children, in the same way, are so polarized. Hai. I mean, just I, when we were in school, I don't remember. I mean, we were fighting, you know, we used to fight in college or in school about Benazir versus Nawaz Sharif. And it used to be like, a, you know, informed from Born. home, but it was, I will kill you and I will never talk to you. I mean, you it was just, in. it was good debate, right? Without yes. the hate in it. So, yeah. No, I hope we, I hope we stick to a more balanced point of view and a more positive space. And I think uh, one of the reasons of creating a platform like even like Ivan Izara is that we want to have spaces where people can come and talk and inspire people towards more positive um, uh, you know, outcomes in life and diversity and inclusion and include people and talk about different issues and talk openly about them and not just, uh, and not just entertain um, people, but really create awareness uh, about different fields. So I'm really grateful for you to, you know, I know you have a very busy schedule and I'm really grateful so for this time today to be with us and to talk to us. And uh, we wish you the very, very best. Uh, and uh, we hope to read and uh, hear many great things from you in the future. And thank you so much thank everyone, you. for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Take care. Good afternoon. Bye. -bye.